So, welcome to Vlogmas, it's the 4th of December, and epic fail. I've been so busy today doing um, packaging and getting ready for the update this evening that I completely forgot to record anything, which is not ideal when you're doing Vlogmas. So, I thought, does anyone remember Jack and Ori? So Jack and Ori, probably not. Jack and Ori was um, where somebody would sit and read a story and it used to begin with, um, are you sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. So for our Christmas in, we did two events this year. One was the mindfulness and one was Christmas in Foxglove Wood. And Christmas in Foxglove Wood had a narrative that ran through it with the animals of the wood. So I thought it might be fun instead in the complete absence of any footage to read the first few days of the Christmas in Foxglove Wood narrative. So, are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Welcome to Christmas in Foxglove Wood. Now this is a little story that centres around um, a rabbit family. Um, you have Bessie and Benny, who are the mum and dad, living in Dickens Burrow. And their three little rabbits are Estella, Amy and Copperfield. And this story mainly deals with Copperfield. As Christmas approaches, we join the animals of Foxglove Wood. The little dell nestles close to Foxglove Cottage, home to Joe, Beth and their three children, Tommy, Florence and baby Alfie. It is the late 1800s and a harsh winter approaches. Heavy frost every morning greets the inhabitants of the little cottage and the animals huddle together to keep warm. December the 1st, an early morning call. Copperfield is sitting on his favourite stump in the highest part of Foxglove Wood that has a fine view over to the fields beyond. He waits there, hoping for a glimpse of the deer through the early morning mists. Signs of life can be heard all around as the little wood awakens and the animals stir from their warm winter beds. All of a sudden, a frantic chattering startles Copperfield out of his reverie and he looks up to see Arthur the Blackbird jumping excitedly on the branch above him. Millie, his wife, bustles out after him. Shush, Arthur! You'll wake the whole wood up! That's the idea, Millie. Christmas preparations must begin. Christmas, thought Copperfield, and a feeling of utter joy rolled through his little body as he sat up straight to listen. December the 2nd, a letter to the postman. Frederick the Robin had an unexpected delight. As he was sorting through the post to be delivered to the animals in the wood, he came across a letter addressed to himself. Imagine! He tore open the envelope with much excitement and hopped for joy when he read that his favourite cousin, Ivan from Russia, was coming to stay for Christmas. Oh, so much to be done! He fluttered out of his little red front door. His round took a lot longer that morning and he stopped to tell everybody about his unexpected Christmas visitor. December the 3rd, an icy plunge. Copperfield was playing near the pond outside Foxglove Cottage, wrapped up nice and warm in his favourite green scarf. He hopped a little closer, touched the ice on the pond tentatively with his furry foot and tapped his chin while he thought, a thing he watched his father do. He decided it would take his weight and slid onto the ice and swirled around deliciously out of control. Tommy was looking out of the kitchen window as he thought he'd just seen a glimpse of the rabbit. Pulling on his boots, he raced outside, but the rabbit was nowhere to be seen. Just as he was turning to go back indoors, he heard a noise and ran back to the pond to see Copperfield in the icy water. Reaching forward carefully, Tommy pulled a sopping rabbit out of the icy depths and raced indoors with him. Cyril the squirrel, who had been raiding the bird table outside the cottage, stood up straight in terror and bounded home to tell Bessie and Benny, Copperfield's parents. Were they going to eat poor Copperfield? December the 4th, the centre of attention. And I woke up in front of the fire on Tommy's lap. Copperfield was telling a rapt audience in the crowded best parlour of Dickens Burrow the next day. That's enough now, Copperfield, fussed Bessie. 
back to bed with you now and don't think I'm still not very cross with you for being by that pond, she scolded, giving him an enormous hug and bustling him off to his room. Sorry I lost my scarf, mother, Copperfield murmured as he was being tucked back into bed and his eyes were already closing. Meanwhile, an amazed chattering had broken out in the parlour as the animals marvelled that the family had indeed dried Copperfield out and set him free and that they hadn't eaten him after all. Back at the cottage, Beth was puzzling over a pale green knitted scrap that she'd found, eventually deciding to put it back by the pond where she discovered it, just in case. December the 5th, Delegating A little cluster of animals sat with their heads pressed together looking at Arthur's list. A little forest of twitching ears listening to instructions. He'd given every one of them a job to do to contribute towards the Christmas festivities. Cyril sat back in relief at seeing he was on the tidying committee again. It gave him an opportunity to hunt for a few more pine cones or hazelnuts for his larder. Bertrand the beaver was grumpy as he'd been up all night and wanted his bed. Why, he asked Arthur, do I always have to be the one clearing up the leaves? A large and scruffy hare fell backwards laughing and Arthur looked hard at him. Perhaps you'd like that job this year, Edward? Edward looked at his rather large feet and fell silent. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that bit of fun. And if you'd like to hear more, I'll probably read some more as the calendar goes on. But drama in Foxglove Wood. That's Archie. You can barely make him out. There he is. He just merges into the background. Anyway, I have been on Instagram and I'm just going to show you this on my laptop actually. So this is Carla's Instagram feed and she has just put up picture of a misread books oh, and it's really made me want to go and find them and I just had a quick look on Amazon They're actually quite expensive second hand I love these covers anyway what I was going to show you was this so this is my lovely friend Sarah who is Sherlock underscore knits struggling to get over a style and she is raising money you can read it here she's on the last few miles and she needs a little bit of sponsorship and all the money goes to Marie Curie so if you fancy supporting lovely Sarah she's such an she's such an amazing lady uh, such a worth, worthwhile cause anyway I have lit a candle and I'm going to sit down and have a little go through Instagram. I'm sitting here with my advent goodies, and I realised I never showed you. I'm just wondering whether to start that. Uh, oh, and look. How lovely is that? This is day, I think that was day three of Nikki Franklin. And what have I done with day two? That's day two. Oh, sorry if you can hear Archie snoring. How lovely is that? Jules, look at that. That was day two as well. Um, I'll get the I'll get I'll get the other things that I've just opened. But look, I didn't show you this bag. I'm sure you've seen it on other people's, but how beautiful is that? So I thought, actually, I might keep um, all of my things in here, rather than in that basket. I have unwrapped them. 
I it was a bit ridiculous wrapping them all back up again every time so I haven't wrapped them and I might keep them in there and I've also been looking at um, Archie um, I've just been having a look on Instagram at the people who have been opening our advent calendar look at this might have a go at that. You snoring is making me feel tired. Archie, you're snoring. Hey. Thank you also for all your lovely comments about the plants. It was so kind of you, and so many of you went off and looked up what my plant was as well, the one that was particularly poorly. And so kind of you and I've learnt a lot I think sometimes it's just as you said maybe it was in the wrong light not enough light but actually again lots of you said that they sort of go into a a time where they s sort of are more dormant and perhaps I've just been over look, kind of overlooking over looking after them too much perhaps I should be kind of neglecting them a bit that's what I'm trying to say anyway Look at this, I didn't show you this the other day, so I've got a lovely little plant that I showed in my last vlog from Nikki, my friend Nikki, and this is the card that I almost missed. Look, she said you can detach this off of the card and hang it up, which actually I might go and put that, that will be on my Christmas tree. Isn't that lovely, I think that's so nice, and I've said this before, but um, she's got a wonderful feed, uh, Instagram feed. Um, first thing of the morning, if you just would like something to make you feel good for the day, go and have a look at her feed because she has, um, oh, she's good with her words. She's fantastic with her camera. She messaged me the other morning, actually quite early, to say she had snow and she got a fabulous picture on her Instagram feed today of um, a field fair. It's amazing. So yeah, I would recommend her feed. Anyway, waffle, waffle, waffle. So I have given up now because the amount of times I've come into the room and not seen him on there and he therefore doesn't kind of, he thinks oh, it's okay. So I've given up now. Archie's officially allowed on the sofa. Bear Archie? Bear? I'm here. Yeah, I see you. 